Sometimes in problems involving counting techniques, the questions branch off into algebra type problems and we're asked to use the formula for combinations or permutations to solve for unknowns. In this case, we're being asked to solve for n choose 4 equaling n choose 3. In other words, what value of n makes that equation true? So to solve this problem, we need to use the combinations formula. And before we do that, we best look at the notation for combinations. So you can see here in purple that there's two different ways to express n choose r, or selecting r objects from n. You can use the capital C, so it's n and r written as superscript and subscript, or you can refer to n choose r in a bracket notation as you would do for a column matrix. And the formula for n choose r is equal to n factorial over n minus r in brackets factorial multiplied by r factorial. Let's use this formula in the example we had right at the beginning of the video. So we can see that n choose 4 is written as n factorial over n minus 4 factorial times 4 factorial, and a similar way too for writing n choose 3. Now what we'll do is we want to solve for n, so we'll put all the terms involving n to the left hand side of this equation. So we can see here that everything in purple has remained in the same position and the coloured terms have been moved from either left or right hand side of the equation to isolate for n. So n minus 3 factorial in red has come from the denominator of the right hand side, we multiply that across. 4 factorial, which is in light blue, has come from the left hand side denominator, so we've multiplied that across. And we divided both sides by n factorial, which appears in green on the left hand side of the equation. Our first step to simplify here would be to divide the left hand side by n factorial. Doing so cancels the n factorial in the top and bottom line. The next step would be to break down some of the factorial notation so we could do some further division. For example, we know that 4 factorial on the right hand side can be expressed as 4 times 3 factorial. And we also know that n minus 3 is greater than n minus 4. So we can break n minus 3 down into n minus 3 multiply the number 1 less than that, which can be expressed as a factorial. In this case, n minus 3 times n minus 4 factorial. Now that we've done that, we can divide common terms. So the n minus 4 factorial disappears, and the 3 factorial on the right hand side also is removed. So we end up with a much simpler equation, which is n minus 3 equals 4. Of course, we can solve that by adding 3 to both sides, and we end up with n equals 7. So the solution to the original equation, which was n choose 4 equals n choose 3, is that n equals 7. Let's have a look at another problem where we're using combination notation to solve an algebraic problem. In this case, we're being asked to find the value of n such that n choose n minus 2 is equal to 10. So we'll use the formula first of all to express n choose n minus 2. So the top line will be n factorial, and on the bottom line we have two parts. One of them is the difference between the two values shown in the combination notation, so that's n minus in brackets n minus 2, all factorial. And then the second part of the denominator is n minus 2 factorial. Now of course we can tidy up that first part of the denominator. n minus in brackets n minus 2 can be simplified to just 2 factorial. It might be wise to pause at this point and check to see that you agree with the final result of 2 factorial as a subtraction of a bracket with a negative is one that often causes simple errors. So now that we've got the fraction broken down into this form, we notice that there's an n factorial and an n minus 2 factorial. n is larger than n minus 2, so we can break down n factorial such that it's n multiplied by a number 1 less than that, which is n minus 1, and then multiplied by n minus 2, expressed with a factorial notation. By doing that, what we've got is n minus 2 factorial, which is common on the top and bottom line of the fraction, which allows for easy simplification. After doing that division of n minus 2 factorial, we can see that we've got n multiplied by n minus 1 on the top line, and 2 factorial on the bottom of the fraction. And of course, all of that is still equal to 10. Now to simplify that, 2 factorial on the bottom is just 2, or 2 times 1, and we can multiply that across so the left hand side becomes 20. The right hand side is still n brackets n minus 1, and at this point it's wise to notice that that's going to form a quadratic equation. And it's easiest to solve quadratic equations when it's expressed equal to 0. We can then do a factorization, 
and we're left with n minus 5 in one bracket and n plus 4 in the other. And if we've got a product of two expressions equal to 0, one of those expressions must equal 0. So either n minus 5 equals 0, which means n equals 5, or n plus 4 equals 0, which means n equals negative 4. Now this won't be a valid solution because in our combination notation we must have n and n minus 2 greater than or equal to 0. So placing the value of n equals 5 back into our original equation, we can see that n choose n minus 2 is actually equal to 5 choose 3 such that the result will be equal to 10.